Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Good morning, traders. At about 9.04 p.m. Eastern last night, news came out of the Middle East of escalation between Israel and Iran and some bombs going off. This resulted in a move in equities uh, that saw them trade to two vola down before recovering. It saw crude oil rally aggressively and put a safe haven bid in gold and fixed income. We also have monthly op options expiration today. My name is John Piranunzi. This is the opening swing for Friday, April 19th, 2024. Let's talk about it. So here we have our daily chart. We're gonna move through this quickly because there's we've covered a lot of this ground. Key to remember on our daily chart, price discovery higher, new all-time highs, rounding of the highs into price discovery lower. Prior months low, as I mentioned yesterday, has become our new line in the sand. We are one time framing lower on the daily chart, which means that the prior day's high is a very important level. We're trading, we continue to put in lower highs and lower lows. We have this area of support in the 50, 60 area where I was sort of expecting this week to kind of end with a rounded bottom and a recovery. That was sort of gonna be my two part expectation yesterday. Yesterday I emphasized that I thought that we would, we would, uh, that I, yesterday my plan was that the prior day's high would be preserved and we would take out the prior day's low. That was my, my primary plan yesterday. And then that was kind of going to be a two-part expectation where I thought we would get that and then we would get the, re the relief rally today. News has changed that. We've now pushed lower than I expected and the market has other things to think about. Let's look at our TPO chart. Again, th this is ground that we've sort of, um, we've covered this ground. Keys to, uh, keys to, to be aware of on this chart impulse lower so basically what does that mean it means that there's a there are sellers up here that need to unload some s and p's price has to go all the way down here to find willing buyers sellers are still unsatisfied they have to now push value a little lower to get their orders off and the same thing hap happens again here we see kind of value just grinding lower as I kind of mentioned yesterday, when we see this situation, there's a strong possibility um, for this grinding action to uncork. Often it can kind of uncork higher for like the nice relief rally. But if the people that are risking the longs aren't getting what they want, it can release lower and news can always confound that. So that's what uh, we're seeing on the TPO. Again, not, not that much there we want to get to the eight box and talk about some possibilities for today quickly on this eight box we'll just discuss what happened yesterday uh it was pretty cut and dry we got what we were looking for we we're just looking for the market to do what we expected to do which is continue the, the theme i was looking for the hot yesterday's high to be stay intact I thought this high was pretty important. My primary expectation was really for us to sort of move up and I thought we'd take that high and then roll over. But instead we didn't, we got this kind of like very aggressive drop early, but that did not get the low and then just walked higher before we finally got the trade that we expected, which was the move lower to yesterday's low and through. And I was looking for the magnet zone to be tested. We kind of, we tested it like to the tick and then moved higher. For those that uh, kind of watch the whole video, I also talked to my discussion of what would happen if we broke the magnet zone. And it kind of, it happened via news, but it sort of happened the way that we expected it to happen, which was if we lost the magnet zone, we kind of fly through here. This was a speed bump. And then we would probably, and then I was expecting potential one rounded bottom here and reversion. Or if we didn't, if we fell through uh, 5K, it would get messy and then we get her out and then we get a recovery and that's what we got but it happened with news so it's a little different but we hit we the tests that we made or the ones that were expected so what can we uh what can we think of you know what might happen today let's talk discuss our key areas today key area century or it's millennium the millennium figure 
key area. Yesterday's low, very key area. And yesterday's settlement, very key area. This is, this area, these areas are where I'm thinking a lot of the trade will go. So I'm, rather than giving a bullish and a bearish and a nothing scenario today, what I'm going to tell you is that it is my opinion that what what I think we'll see today, my, my expectation, what I'm planning for, is I'm thinking that most of the trade that we get will happen between the, these areas. There's a lot of volume, a lot of activity overnight based on news. Don't be shocked if the early part of the morning in the S&Ps is a lot quieter, a lot more random than you think in between this area. And I'll go as far down, like we get the test lower to the 90s. But so I'll tell you that my primary expectation that I think we'll see early is action in this area that is mostly non-directional. I could see that that could happen kind of one, one of two ways. We could, well, several ways. From here, as I've kind of mentioned, we could kind of get the test higher through yesterday's low to close the gap to settlement. We, we could push up higher. It doesn't have to touch settlement. It just has to get it just has to make an attempt to trade yesterday's range and get rejected. That could happen with a push higher to settlement that fails or um, didn't mean to delete all of them, but it could happen with a, do these, it could happen with a push higher that fails and then continues to here, maybe find support or pushes through and continues. And then we see a wedge build or it could happen just by sort of rolling over here as the offers kind of just pile up. And then we sort of do the same thing. Maybe we hold here, maybe we fall through. But the key here is I'm expecting this area. I'm expecting this area to see a lot of action and for it to be mostly non-directional. From the prior settle down to millennium with maybe a push through to this 90 zone. I'm expecting a lot of action to happen here. Um, Barring news, barring news. The other way could obviously happen, and trades could be certainly available in this. There's 50 points of range, so there's going to be action in here. But uh, what I'm kind of saying is, for me, I'm looking at this this area. I'm looking at this as mostly outside in, unless there is some catalyst or impetus for us to move. That's my that's what I'm thinking right now. This could also happen with an, the immediate drop, test here, rejection higher then get into the settlement and then fall over lower and start doing the same thing. So like I'm saying, I, I'm thinking we see a lot of action here that is mostly non-directional. I'm seeing the millennium is very important. I'm seeing the nineties as key to be held. If, uh, if I'm correct about this, I think once we get below nineties and we can get into here, I'll go over this, but I'm thinking a lot of action in this, in this area. What happens if we rally out of this? First off, how can we rally out of this area? We could rally out of this area because people need to cover shorts because news comes out today that walks back a lot of any of the stuff, the aggression that happened last night. Uh, Iran kind of already did a little bit of that. So that could be cause for us to rally. So if we rally, what would it look like? Well, obviously peace settle, very important. We'd need to see price get through this, get through it chop around, attempt to fall back in, recover, take out this high again, and we want to see price very comfortable above peace settle. If it's comfortable above peace settle, then we're going to expect a move up. This rust colored area is the 75s or 80s. If we get into this area, I think the squeeze could really start if we're holding this rust colored area. That's where a squeeze could start. We could easily fall over from here. But if we don't, I could see the squeeze really happening. And then we're going to move up. And if there's a big squeeze, yesterday's high is the key target. And if we bulldoze through yesterday's high, then there, there's potential for, um, for a squeeze. I'm not expecting this unless there's some news that, uh, that, that sort of would support this idea. But this is kind of the path I would expect it to take. We've went over the targets above uh, yesterday and the prior days, and they haven't been hit yet. So... You guys are familiar with them, but 
that would sort of be the bullish idea here. The bearish idea from here would basically involve, like if we if we got bearish from here, it could happen actually with just sort of a grinding trend. Whereas we make some attempt, it rolls over and we just sort of start grinding lower. And this is one of those times where all of a sudden everybody realizes like, oh, we're not gonna rally, but there's no good entries, but the market just keeps going lower anyway. I could see something like that happen where it's just the the heaviness of the supply of people that still want to unload in this area just kind of pushes and we just sort of fall lower and we get this. Now, again, from here, we could get the reversion into the wedge kind of trade, I said, or the test lower into the wedge sort of trade and then just sort of, you know, tighten up in there. That could happen. Or we could try to do that and then Millennium could go offered. And if Millennium goes offered in the same kind of way, I wouldn't be surprised to see us just sort of drip down here. I'm still tending to think that without news, without further news, this may be, this, this overnight low may be safe. Maybe. I'm not, I mean, I'm not especially banking on that, but Without news, uh, I'm not certain if we break this today. Uh, I'm not certain. Now, I'm wrong all the time. So these are just p potentialities of what could happen. So we could kind of see some sort of push. And then what could happen in, that, in this scenario is instead of seeing the trade happen up here, we could kind of see, the, see this, like we could kind of see a lot of resistance just sort of emerge in these areas and we get pushed below 5K. If we're pushed below 5K, I do think it would be a grind. And if we do get into this, it could be a grind uh, lower. Now, obviously the, other, the alternate situation is if we get like a really nice trade that goes up here, gives us this clean test, you know, shows it can't get back into here and goes down and takes out the, the overnight low, that would be great. If we get like poor, better price, at, price discovery into that, I'm not sure if we will, but uh, anyway, so right now I will just quickly recap that for completion so we can go on and prepare for our day. Key area, settlement, key area, yesterday's low, key area, millennium figure, and key area, sort of this box below as the last sort of like branch that the buyers can grab on their way down. So anyway, primary idea is a lot of action in this area that is mostly non-directional, but that should provide some opportunities to trade uh, for day trades into stats and whatnot, potentially the gap close, prior settle, uh, as well as the overnight mid stat is available and the overnight stat, overnight uh, big range overnight. So you know, the overnight stat would be a little bit, um, might be tough. We could get it on the high here. But primary idea is a lot of action in this area that probably will give trades in both directions. And barring any news, we may just settle in here. We may end, end up settling in here. If we get news that walks back what happened, or we see that it's kind of, somebody says it's less of a big deal than we expect it to be, then we could see, we could see shorts get squeezed. I think the key to shorts being squeezed is going to be the ability to hold this area. Shorts being squeezed, is the, is, they would need to hold this area. And then if we get up above settlement and get in the rust colored area, then things get interesting. And again, similarly, the short ideas really get serious when we get below 5k and we get into this area and we can't get above. That's when the shorts really start to get interesting and we might take out this low and we might extend. Below this low, I'm just going by the stock zones that are that are created by Convergent because um, I trust them and I make them, they're mine, and I put a lot of work into them. So below that, I will just be trading zone to zone. But those are the ideas. I'm expecting a lot of action in here. I could see a settling in here. I think that uh, news that walks back the situation could cause a squeeze. 
I think that a lack of news or news that says it's worse could cause more unloading. Uh, that's what I'm seeing today. So that's what I got for you guys. I'm going to end by saying one more thing here. I've been a trader for a long time and uh, I've traded a lot of news events. For some traders, it's better to just leave for some traders. For other traders, like probably myself, balance trader at CT, you know, FT, these are, we'll stay up all night for something like this. And, um, you know, we do that because there's opportunity. We also do that because our function as traders, our function is to provide liquidity to markets. That's what we do. That's what we do for, you know, that's our function. But something that I should mention here, um, I think that without a doubt, if you're sitting here in a office and you're safe and there's food in your fridge and maybe you have people in your life that love you, I think it's, uh, I think it's appropriate to, um, to, for a moment, be empathetic towards people that are, um, whose, whose lives have been turned up to, upside down by, by what's happening. So I think we really have to um, be aware of that right now. You know, we're getting ready to go into our work day, our chosen vocation. And uh, there are people that, um, that are affected in a totally different way by this. And I think that it's just uh, that, that we really have to be empathetic and be aware of that. So I'll close by saying that, as always, you know, I wish you the best day you can have. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I encourage you to find some way to be better than you were yesterday today. But I also want to emphasize that um, this is a day to also be very empathetic and be aware of um, how things in our world are affecting other people very differently. So that's that. That was the opening swing. I uh, wish everyone the best. Cheers.